Hi, I'm Kate with Nancy's Notions, and I'd like to show you how easy it is to create beautiful embroidered scenes from single designs. Amazing Designs collections start with very talented artists and their original artwork. As you can see here, we have a Mustang Western theme collection, and it's actually made up of several designs. So I'd like to show you how you can use just single designs that are in the collection, but they've been designed to be merged together to create a whole scene. So let's get started. So here I have just started a very rough layout. I'm actually working on the fabric that I'm going to be using just because it gives me a coloration. And I've printed out templates that are going to be very helpful in the design process, but also in the embroidery process. I like to use the translucent foundation paper when I print out the templates because you can see the designs that are underneath. And when you're creating a scene, you may often be doing a lot of layering. So it's very, very helpful to have that translucent quality in your templates. So right here, I've started a layout. It's actually fairly large. You can see I've used seven different designs, all printed on the template, to create a single scene. Now we're going to divide that into an upper half and a lower half. And I'd like to show you how to then stitch and layer the lower half. So here I have my actual project fabric. I've already marked the perimeter outline. I don't want to stitch beyond that line just to keep the project piece the exact size I need for the finished wall hanging. I needed to reduce my horses, each of the horses, just slightly. So I've printed new templates at the new size and I've taped them in place with Sewer's Fix-It Tape. Sewer's Fix-It Tape is a nice stronghold, but it's a temporary hold and it doesn't damage the fabric or the template. So at this point, I'm going to be very careful about the order that I will stitch in. You always want to start with a background design first and then work your way or embroider your way to the front. So if you need a little reminder, and often I will do this so I don't embroider out of order, I will put just a little sticker right on the template. I don't have to worry about really covering up the design too much. That sticker is really small. But this will remind me to stay in that order when I'm stitching. So now at this point, we're actually to hoop our stabilizer and I'll show you the next steps. Right now, I have the two designs with the templates, but I did go ahead and embroider those two background horses already so we can show you the next process, which is much more exciting. So here are horse number one and number two already stitched. And don't worry too much about the little ripples that's going to press out once you're um, progressing on the project. We're going to now place our last template. And this is where the translucent foundation paper really is perfect for this part of the project because you can see where the embroidery of the other two horses is. And then you can make any fine tune adjustments that you might want. So again, stick that template down with a little bit of the source fix-it tape. So one last thing I did before I'm ready to hoop is I did draw on the template a very bold cross mark. And I'm going to be using that to help align the template over the hoop area. The hoop has cross mark markings at the middle of the hoop. And that's what I'm going to use to find the center of the hoop so that I can center my design and that will make placement and initial embroidery very easy and quick. What I'm doing is I'm just feeling for the notches under the fabric and you're always able to do a little bit of fine tuning once you're at the embroidery machine. So we're going to flip that back and this is a water activated stabilizer, hydro stick. So I have a damp sponge. It's not dripping wet, but it's wet enough that I'll get a nice film of tackiness right on the stabilizer and that will hold my fabric in place perfectly. 
Then I'll go to the other side and dampen that just a little bit. We'll bring that back down, smooth it in place, and give it just a few seconds to set. It's a wonderful tearaway stabilizer that will tear very cleanly once we're finished with the embroidery. So now let's go to that embroidery. Right now I have the hoop attached to the embroidery unit and I've already brought the design up on the screen. This is where I need to double check that the placement of my design is exactly where the template is. And if you look really closely right under the foot, you can see that my needle does not line up with that grid line that I drew. So I know it's not quite centered, which is not a big problem. I just need to shift my needle position over so that it lines up right with that cross mark. So now I'm ready to embroider and I'm going to now thread the machine and then we'll get started. So I've got the machine threaded. I also have my threads laid out in the order that I'll be stitching them. So it's very easy and fast to bring up the next thread, get it threaded, just makes it a little more efficient. And before I start any stitching, I want to remember to remove the template. So we'll just gently untape it, move it aside, and start the embroidery. This is the fun part to watch. So now you've watched the last horse stitch, you're now going to be ready to start the composition for the upper half of your embroidered scene. With the lower half already stitched and completed, we're now ready to take a look at the upper half. What I would do is I would go back to my original layout and then follow that as my guide to position all the templates that I need to create the upper portion of the embroidered scene. Well, I hope I've answered some of the questions you might have about building scenes with embroidery designs. Now it's your turn to let your creativity run wild with amazing designs, Mustang Mystique. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button below and feel free to leave us a comment. So enjoy your embroidery.